scarves collected through the years. The pendants, the rosettes and banners flood the room in a blaze of red and white. What's so special about them? I don't know. I don't really know. Just something that's got in them and I just can't get out of it. Dozens of little knickknacks are laid out on display. United ashtrays and pens, hooters, bags and key rings with a place of honour for pint-sized United players. Breeze, uh, when your husband suggested that you called your little boy Graham Trafford Stepney Young, James Buckenholt and Graham Kidd, Morgan Macari, Anderson, Moore McKittery, what was your basic reaction at the time? Well, the whole time I was crying, Graham, he said he would, but I really didn't believe him. I sometimes keep high going saying Manchester United is first love and I come second, but he assures me it's not I'm first and they're second. The man who lives here is the expert on everything from cowbells to cathedral bells. He's Frederick Sharp, or as the musical world knows him, just plain F Sharp. I have a hundred here, but there are over 250 of them altogether. Gradually, bells have taken over his house too, crowding him out to his den in the garden. And when dinner's ready, how else would the long-suffering Mrs. F Sharp call for him? Rubens has got what's thought to be the biggest collection of antique banjos in the world. He's got 600 of the things in his house, on the floor, up the walls, even in his bedroom, and he can't play a single one. Rubens' wife, Doreen, isn't exactly the biggest banjo fan in the world. Not that she'd put it in those terms with her husband in earshot. Well, I don't really mind them. I've got used to them. I don't, uh... Well, I don't think we could live without them now. It's sort of part of the place. Have you got any idea, by the way, with all the stuff you have here, how, how many objects you have collected? I wouldn't have any idea, no. You never get fed up with them all and think you'll no. get rid of them all and then settle no, down no, with an never. ordinary house like anybody no. else? No, I never do because they're very interesting. Nearly 3,000. All, di all different, yes sir. These are two carved limewood ram's heads. A lot of people would say that bottle collecting was a pretty strange hobby for an 11-year-old boy. What do your friends think? Well, at first, some of them thought that I was a bit nutty, I was gone the head sort of thing, but uh, I think when I've told them that the, some of the bottles are quite valuable, that they're beginning to understand the point of it now. How did it start, Peter? With me or with the, the whole mystique of teddy bears? I came back one holiday from school and I found that my teddy bear had disappeared. How old were you? Well, I'm afraid I was 16 at the time. What had happened to it then? My mother had given it to a jumble sale. At 68, Colonel Henderson is still a relentless, dedicated hunter and collector of teddy bears. Enough bears to make Goldilocks' hair stand on end. But you look at a bear like this. Look how a lovely, friendly fellow he is. Look how cuddly he is. Give him a hug. Wherever you go, wherever you look in Colonel Henderson's house, you'll find teddy bears ready to pounce. There are a very large number of uh, uh, arctophilists or arctophiles, friends of bears, people who are teddy bear conscious. They are practically a live pet. Erica, <laughs> what's special about cats? Well, they are incredibly independent. They moved into one room, they moved into another room, they ended up in the staircase, and uh, more or less they decided what was what in the house. This little thing is quite fun, a cat nail for a cat dance in Persia. Most collectors would no more dream of firing their 18th century dueling pistols than I would dream of putting a penny black on my income tax return. 
This is the famous English brown desk musket. This is an Elizabethan matchlock. This is a double-barreled percussion cap muzzle-loading gun made in London by Charles Lancaster in 1853. We are going to fire a three-pounder brass cannon for the purpose of making sure that no glowing material is left gun touched off by hand in this manner. This is no toy rifle. There's an enormous amount of detail in it. I mean, some of them are actually quite extraordinary. If you, you look at this figure here, you can actually pick up that it's a straw cap that he's wearing. And he's got his horse toy, which he probably would pull along. The attention to detail is really so beautiful. It may be surprising, but the Opies do admit that their collection is still far from complete. Now, here you've got all the uh, different kinds of uh, um, uh, uh, sweet cigarettes for children with all their, um, uh, uh, the different kind of people who've been popular on uh, Daleks, for instance, and uh, Laurel and Hardy. In a hundred years' time, this will be fascinating material, and, and uh, you know, the probability is there'll be no other collection like this at all.